It was a very hard decision because I was so comfortable. I mean, I loved working with my team, with my boss, and it was like, you know, uh, I could do that forever. But as you said, I mean, you, you are right. I'm to a, to a large extent a rational person, but on the contrary, I'm also a very emotional person, very emotional person. Today in studio with us, we have Ms. Asia Zargar, tax director with Agility, and a mother of two. Hope you enjoy today's conversation with us with some really insightful takeaways. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asia, for being with us today. So let's start with um, a point about your career. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how did all of this come about? How did you um, start your career? Where did you start off from? Uh, in terms of your career and where you are today. Yeah, thank you very much, Malvika, for having me here today. Um, well, it's it's a very interesting journey because I come from a very small town um, in in the north northern India, northernmost India. So I'm from Srinagar, Jammu and Kashmir. So it's a very small town, and back in the days, um, the only professions people would want to choose there were either medicine, so want to be doctors or engineers. So for a girl to become a chartered accountant was unheard of. But I had a lot of guidance because my dad is a chartered accountant, so he was my inspiration. Although, I mean, to be fair, he never uh, tried to um, influence me. He was like, you know, you choose your career because at the end of the day, you have to live, it, live with it for the rest of your life. So that's how I, uh, because I used to see him and, you know, for every girl, I think the dad is their biggest inspiration, right? right. Role <laughs> so, model. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, always, I want to become a chartered accountant. And this used to sound foreign to a lot of my friends. And they were like, we've never heard, what does a chartered accountant do? <laughs> right? So, but my dad encouraged me, which, you know, I'm highly grateful for, because we come from, like I said, it's a small town. It's more of a patriarchal society, you know. Um, um, I mean, nobody in my family, I think both on my dad's side and on my mom's side, have been too much into education. Um, and the other people around us were either doctors or engineers, like I said, or business businessmen, you know, business families. But my dad encouraged me. He, he supported me always. So I'm really grateful for that. So that's how it, you know, came about. Um, and then I started my career with PwC in Delhi. Uh, in, in, in India. Um, I started in their tax team. Again, my dad is into taxes, so I was always like, you know, very interested because, you know, he used to have those conversations around tax planning and, you know, how to do this, how to save taxes. <laughs> so it, it always used to sound very interesting. So I was like, and, and audit, on the other hand, because, I mean, when you are at the start of your career, you would either go to audit right. and, you know, or, That's or, right. or tax. And then with audit, um, I, I wasn't very fond of going to places, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a private person that way. So I was like, tax is interesting, but at the same time, it's like, you know, also aligns with um, not too much travel and, you know, more right. of a one place kind of a thing, Job, right? Yes. So, so, so I, I started with PwC in their tax team as an asso associate. Um, I worked there for two and a half years. Um, it was a great learning experience. And then I was like, okay, um, I've had now four, four and a half years of consulting experience. Maybe it's time to look out in the industry and see what's there. Because I've always been fascinated with these two sides of the table. So consulting is the one side, right? But it's also the business. I mean, how these people think, how they run their businesses. So I've always been fascinated with that. So uh, luckily, I got a good opportunity. It was with a company called Ariba. It was a U.S. headquartered software company. Um, and it was not a purely tax role. It was a finance and tax role. I mean, finance is the other love right. for a chartered accountant, right? It's always right. a bit of a... <laughs> so it, it was like uh, very lucrative for me because I was like, I'm going to do the two things that I love the most, right? Um, but then two years into that role, we got acquired by uh, SAP, and that's how, you know, I got, um, and SAP is a very big organization. Right. It's a very centralized organization. So you had, I had to choose whether I wanted to go to their accounting team or their tax team because they're like very separate and very um, segregated. Um, so I chose tax. Uh, and I'm so glad I made that decision because I found the most wonderful uh, mentor, bo my boss there. 
And he's, so I was with SAP for nearly 10, 11 years. So up until the end of 2022, right from, you know, 2013, 2014, when we got acquired. Um, so he was the best mentor and, you know, he was really, he always pushed me to come out of my comfort zone and, you know, learn new things. It was a big team, a big role there. So I was uh, heading their uh, tax team for Asia, Pacific, Middle East and Africa. So a big region. Um, obviously, uh, most of it virtually. So I had 22 people reporting into me. It was a big team, a big region, a very tax-rich region, if if I may call it that, because, I mean, it, it, it encompassed countries like China, India, Nigeria, Kenya, African countries, which are Middle East, of course, which are like, you know, not very tax-mature jurisdictions. So you have a lot to learn, but also a lot to teach to the tax authority. So it was like a mutual exchange that we had in those. So it was a very, very enriching experience. Um, then at the end of 2022, I left SAP, and now I am working with Agility as the tax director. For Middle East and Africa, it's, I mean, the designation is Middle East and Africa, but it's basically a global role. Global role. So I'm part of their corporate team. So we, we, we are a conglomerate with multiple yes. divisions. And we oversee the corporate tax function. So, you know, the corporate tax governance framework for the whole group so that, you know, we make sure that everybody is in sync. So all the divisions are working on the same policies and the same framework, you know, so that we are aligned. Um, and luckily, Touchwood, I have a great boss here as well. I, I keep referring to that because I think it's very important um, as, 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 as a no normal professional, but especially as a woman, to have a good mentor. Yeah. Right. That. So. Yeah. So I was I was actually coming to that because uh, I've uh, observed throughout your journey, you have had men. Yeah. Who have been a great support. Yeah. It started with your dad. Yeah. He was a role model which brought you into this Absolutely. field, into this uh, career stream, and then you had a great boss, a mentor again. And even currently, in your current workplace, you have a great mentor. So I think, I think hats off to all the men as well exactly. who are uh, contributing their best to uplift and empower women. Yeah. And I think that's one aspect a lot of times we forget to talk about. Yeah. Um, Asya, let me ask, in this entire journey in your career, have you had any instances where the challenges have been so great that you have sometimes probably had this, uh, have had this moment which made you feel that you have to just quit. I know you have a great boss. Mm -hmm. You had great bosses. Yeah. But there are moments in a woman's life yeah. where the challenges are so great that you probably cannot take it beyond a certain point. So what were those challenges and what actually made you stick on or face those challenges to come out of it? Yeah. So um, you're very right, Malvika. I think, um, I mean, I am a woman, so I can only speak for women. Right? Right. But I'm sure men right. have their own challenges right. too. Um, well, the work culture in, in India in consulting wasn't that great. I mean, let me be very honest about okay. it. Yeah. So you had long working hours. You didn't have a lot of compassion for, you know, female colleagues that, you know, they also have to go home and they have a family at the end of the day. Right. I was lucky those days because I wasn't married, so I didn't have a family. But I mean, you know, so right. it, it, it's, it's not, at least in those times, I know times have changed a lot, and I'm talking about 2008, 9, 10. In those times, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really normal for women to be out until 11, 12 a.m. for work. Yes, that's stuff, the truth. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so... It, it, I sometimes felt that there was lack of compassion on the part of the colleagues that we were working for. Um, and um, so that was one challenge. Um, and I guess that kind of drove me a little bit to the industry, mm -hmm. not, 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 not entirely, but I was like, yeah, maybe I'll find better colleagues there, which I did, <laughs> thankfully. But I guess the, the other big challenge was when I became a mom. So I'm, I'm a mom of two lovely kids. And there were instances where I, I mean, my elder one is eight now. Um, and during these eight years, I've had a number of times think whether this is all worth it, right? Because, I mean, I feel like I've, I blinked my eye and he turned eight. And I blinked my eye and the younger one is turning five in a month, right? So I'm like, 
you know, at the end of my life, when I reflect back on what I've done, um, is this job, career, title, money going to matter? Or am I going to regret that I didn't spend those golden moments with my kids, right? Um, but the thing that has kept me going, because this is this is huge mom guilt, and I'm sure all working mothers experience Absolutely. this. Right? I have it too. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you do. It's like, you know, a payoff between whether you spend time with your kids or whether you work. But the thing that has kept me going through all of this is I want my kids to look up to me as a strong, independent woman, right? Because, I mean, I was reading somewhere that, you know, um, if your kids see you that way, they also then become respectful towards your right. future. Towards they follow their future, you. Exactly, towards right. their future wives. And, you know, I would want, so I have both boys, so I would want them to grow into kind, compassionate men who actually are supporting their wives or daughters in the long run, right, right. To, to, to be strong and independent women, right? I mean, we always say behind every strong man, there is a, a strong woman, but I think it's also true the, the other, other way, way around, yeah? <laughs> behind every uh, independent woman, there is a guy at, at home who's sometimes holding fort That's in your absence. Right. And it's very true in my case. I mean, touch wood, I have a great husband who's always very supportive. I mean, I've had travels during my work because, you know, when you're managing regions, you sometimes have to travel, especially if it's virtually, to, to engage with the team, team building. But he's been the one who's, you know, um, holding the fort in my absence. So, uh, so back to your point, I mean, I have had a lot of great men in my life supporting me, and I don't think without them I would be where I am. But of course, I mean, not to, not to take away from the fact that I have a great mom who always was like, you know, and, and so my mom was a homemaker, um, but she was so insistent that I have a strong, independent career. So I remember the three or four months after I left SAP and I was not working, she was more worried than me. And she was like, you need to get back to work. <laughs> you need to get, why are you not going back to work? I was like, okay, don't worry. I'm taking this break on a purpose. But, you know, she was like, no, <laughs> you, you need to get back to work because, yeah, I, I don't want you to be dependent on anybody or, you know, you, you've carved out a way for yourself and you need to keep going. So it's these words of, encouragement and it's the support that you get from the people that you know you feel like you should keep going and also for for the future generation like I said I mean my kids need to see that this is normal for women to be out there and their role is not primary um, I mean I have immense respect for women who are homemakers honestly I think it takes a lot of courage yeah. A lot of effort. Yeah. I am not strong enough to do that. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Right. So it's um, it's just you know it's every everybody's personal choice, and that's completely you know uh, you have to respect that. Um, but I want my kids to be flexible with that in the future. So if their wife wants to work, great. If she doesn't want to work, that's also great. But you know to to have that open mindedness right. towards right. towards your partner. Yeah, right? so yeah. And I think uh, for a lot of women who are balancing career and family, the greatest support is the family. Absolutely. And it's when I say family, it's not only the immediate family. So I don't mean just the spouses, but it is also the parents. Yeah. Because without uh, the open minded thinking of parents, the girl child cannot really, you know, achieve something great. So I think it starts from home, like exactly. the way you said. So that applies to your children as well. It starts from home. And, and I believe the same, Asia, uh, personally as well. I feel that though I might not give the required time uh, for my child uh, as, as a mother, someday there's going to be this thought in his mind that my mother has worked really hard exactly. to get where she has come. Exactly. And that will be an inspiration. And, and probably as a mother of a boy child, you really need to be an inspiration to them. Exactly. And I think they will carry that further for, for a lifetime. Exactly. That's how I see it too. So uh, a lovely thought from your side as well. 
but also now coming back to uh, balancing the two things how do you actually in in terms of practicality how do you balance your family life and your work life um do you have long work hours at times i'm sure being a tax director yeah. is doesn't come easy and now that we know um uh, tax people are all busy in, yeah. in this market <laughs> uh, and not only in this market and because you have been in international taxation yeah. right so you have handled a uh, cross border transactions and jurisdictions so so it's not only about one jurisdiction that you study you are an expert in a lot of other uh, country uh, matters as well so how do you balance it do you find resistance uh, coming sometimes sometimes from your very supportive spouse as well because mm -hmm. you know there are times when they <laughs> might also break down so how do you manage it and do you find resistance and how do you balance this resistance yeah it's I mean, first, there are two aspects to it, the external, the internal. The internal is like an ongoing constant battle within yourself that, you know, I'm not doing good enough for the family, I'm not a good enough mom. <laughs> if I miss a sports day, I mean, you know, you carry that guilt right. for a long, long time right. till the next sports day, probably when you're able to make it, right? Um, so I, I have, you know, I, I read a lot about it, you know, how to do it. I, I, I know, I mean, in theory, th things always look different. Um, but what I try to do is I make it a point to put my kids to bed. So we talk about the day so that they don't feel like, you know, our mom is not interested in what we are doing. Sometimes it's the very That's small beautiful. things. Like, you know, my younger one keeps telling me that, you know, today this person hurt me and I have a mosquito bite on my hands. That's a very <laughs> frequent one. So it's just like acknowledging the very small things, but I feel it helps. And I read about this beautiful concept of magic 20. Mm -hmm. So it's like 20 minutes of undivided attention to your child doing whatever they want to do. So it's because I, I've read it many times that it doesn't, it, the quantity doesn't matter. It's the quality of the time you spend. Again, sometimes, you know, my rational brain is like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. But my heart is like, no, it has to be like the quantity. More, yeah, the quantity. How can it work? Like with only 20 minutes, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I guess. Um, so I try to do that, spend 20 minutes of, of undivided quality time. With them, the thing is, with with schools and extracurricular activities, there's also not a lot of time left on their side. Right, right. right. And, and They're busy. Find, exactly. The kids are busy nowadays. And then they need to get to bed early because they have an early start the right. next day. So to find that time sometimes is also difficult. Of course, as you rightly said, being in taxes or being in any profession, I mean, you have your good days and your bad days where you have to work long hours. So. This week I've been in, 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 in conference meetings and I've been reaching home past their bedtime. So they were already asleep mm -hmm. by the time I was home. So I'm still, you know, feeling like, like, you know, yeah, this week was from a personal perspective, from a professional perspective, it was very enrich enriching. But from a personal perspective, I'm feeling that, you know, I've missed out on those things this week. So I'm going to try and catch up on the weekend on that, right? Um, it is definitely heartbreaking when your child is like, you know, it feels like you're not giving me enough time. My kids say that a lot, probably because they're very smart. They know it emotionally triggers me. Yeah, <laughs> right? Right. right. And then immediately after that, they'll be like, can you buy us this? I'm like, OK, I know you're trying to manipulate my yeah, emotions. Yeah. They're trying to make you feel guilty. <laughs> exactly. So kids pick up on that. But as a mom, it hits you really hard when your child says that. Right. Um, but I guess these are these small things you know, try to make up for it and, you know, maybe go for uh, a drive or, you know, try to steal those small moments in your busy life, right? When it comes to the spouse, I mean, it is so true that, you know, sometimes your spouse will be like, either your job is your life or your kids are your life. Right. Where am I in your life? <laughs> <laughs> and we've, we've had those conversations, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, I mean... Uh, it happens Na all the time. Naturally, you <laughs> prioritize, right? I mean, like you would at work. So you prioritize, of course, work is important, but then kids are important. And sometimes, you know, the spouse is like taken for granted and you know, right. you're anyway there. Right. <laughs> you're not going to go anywhere. So yeah, it's, it's, I guess that is something, to be honest, something I need to work on a little bit more um, because I do sometimes feel bad <laughs> for him. It's like, you know, um, I'm probably not also giving him enough time. But what we do try to do as a very regular thing is after the kids are put to bed, which is a bit earlier in the night, we try to spend a couple of hours together 
just talking about our day, maybe just watching Netflix or a movie together, you know, just to, to, ha- to have that connection and to keep it going. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not good enough, but then, I mean, it's, it's all about balancing it, right? Right. Um, um, I mean, my kids are still relatively younger, so I think since they were born, we've not had a getaway without the kids. I was coming to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, 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 we live in a nuclear setup here. Our parents right. are both back in India. Right. But um, luckily, I have my brother here okay. and, his, and, and his wife, and I have a six-year-old nephew. Mm-hmm. So... I'm now thinking that, you know, I probably need to increase the sleepovers yeah, with yeah. their uncle and for him also the other way around right. so that the kids start to get a bit independent and we get a bit more time to right. travel together and, you know. And that will also give them time to know the other side of the family exactly. as well because I think being here uh, in a nuclear family, um, the kids who are born and brought up here somehow get detached yeah. from Social. family. Exactly. So, uh, I have spoken to many women as to what they do in order to make sure that the kids are attached to their, let's say, roots, their hometown, yeah. as well as the immediate family yeah. members. And I think that's one great way to do it, uh, yeah. to have more sleepovers for exactly. the kids. Um, and uh, But but do, do you guys ever have vacations? Do you, do you do vacations as a couple or as a family so that you, you know, you keep the relationship going? That's important yeah. too for, for, for anyone. Yeah, as a couple, like I said, no, none so far <laughs> since the kids have been yeah. born. But as a family, yes, definitely we have okay. a few. So, of course, once a year during the summer holidays, we go back to India. I mean, COVID was a nightmare three yeah. years we couldn't yeah, travel right. but we go generally we go once a year so for the last two years we've been going we spend like a month back there they get time to spend with their grandparents the extended family where so they get to know the roots of their parents where they are from where we are from right, right. um so we do that but we also travel to other places like you know maybe if it's the spring break or or the smaller breaks the half term term breaks um so we've been to a few places and now my kids can't stop and they're like, where are we going next? I'm like, okay, we also have a job to do, right? Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, we do that. We do that. And I do definitely agree that it helps to build the relationship, right? Because then you have this um, this time that you don't have to do anything else, but just spend as, you know, the four, four of you and do things and... And that's why I think the kids crave it more because they are like, you know, this is our time. Right. There is no right. interruptions, no disruptions. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, we try to do that. Yeah, I know. And that. also because the kids would know that if uh, they, they miss out on this time, then yeah. uh, they do not have uh, this time coming back again until, I don't know, probably the next day, exactly. the same time. Exactly. Um, apart from family and work life, mm-hmm. Asia, do you do anything more to, let's say, um, have a me time or to have um, a more a personal development time? Mm-hmm. Uh, w- what are the things you do and, and how do you do this? How do you squeeze in this sort of a time? Is it, again, kept for the weekend or do you do something over the weekday so that, you know, you can balance, let's say, your health, your uh, hobbies? How do you do that? Um, so, yeah, I mean, with, with a hectic work life and then, you know, family life, it does get very difficult. But it is so important to have that me time because if you're not taking care of yourself, then how are you... If your cup is empty, how are you going to fill, fill the, it for, for, for others, right. right? And this is so true because, I mean, when I have extended periods of work, I feel myself starting to get a bit cranky and irritated, right. mood swings. I mean, because... Probably you have not had enough sleep or you've not had time to fill that cup to do something that feels like, you know, right. um, bringing yourself back. So I do, I, I started to do yoga. I have to admit, I'm not very uh, punctual with it because it's like, <laughs> again, the priorities, right? Right. Uh, but I, I try to do that because, you know, at one point in time, I felt like was my brain was going to explode because there was so much in there. So to declutter that, I started to do yoga and meditation, which really helped me. But it's 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 an ongoing thing, right? You have to do it every day. You have to do it, you know, religiously for right. it to have beneficial an effect. effect. Exactly. Uh, I try to do that sometimes. And when I have a really cluttered mind, I try to go for walks. I'm fortunate enough to live in a community where we have a walking track. So sometimes a 30-minute walk kind of really refreshes me. 
and my mind is like, you know, back on track. It's not too cluttered. So I, I try to do that. From hobbies perspective, I, I love to read. But of course, so my, my, my problem is if I start a book, I have to finish it. So, I mean, sometimes you don't have that time, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm, then I'm a little bit hesitant. Should I even start it? <laughs> so, but, but um, I've, I've read uh, a few books which have also given me some techniques how to take care. So I, I love, I tell this to everybody. I love the book Ikigai. Um, you know, what is the purpose of life, right? Um, it's it's hard to follow, <laughs> but <laughs> at least it gives you some pointers that, you know, you can... you can. Implement. So I like to read books like that. I like to read books about people, um, like biographies or self-biographies um, of inspirational people. So I've read a few back in the day, not, not, nothing more recently, but they serve as some kind of inspiration because you feel like... Even the great people that you see, you know, that, that have achieved a lot, they've also gone through challenges in their life and they've overcome it. So if they are strong and resilient enough to do that, so can we. I mean, we, it's not like they have some extraordinary superpowers that they use, right? right? They're also human beings. So I guess that kind of inspiration and motivation is sometimes important. Um, and what I do is I spend a lot of time with my friends, which are also family friends, so it's it's easy so we for example have a lot of weekend dinners together so the men get together the men are friends the women are friends so I have that girl time right you know kind of venting or right. <laughs> complaining or whatever I need right. to do because I think you really need, need that, that right? time sometimes you need a woman <laughs> to, to talk to and give you that perspective am I going crazy or is this normal and they're like no no we have the same so yeah so those those are the things that we try to and they have kids too so that's ideal the kids are playing together the men are together the women are together so it's it doesn't have to come out of anybody's time. We are all together, but it really helps. I mean, I've realized if I go a couple of weekends without that, I start to get a bit, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it doesn't have it to be too out, much. Exactly. It doesn't have to be outside all the time in restaurants. I don't actually prefer that. I prefer a home setup because then you're more relaxed. It, it isn't too formal. Um, but yeah, I, I like to do that uh, a lot. So these are the yeah, you know the things. That yeah, kind I'm of sure everyone me. has their space uh, in which they are comfortable, and for yeah. you, it's home, yeah. which is which for is me it's home. which is wonderful. And um, also coming to the fact that every successful people also have a certain way to motivate themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, in your case, from what I understand, it's let's say reading books, yeah. reading some uh, good inspirational uh, books about people who have uh, faced challenges and have come successful out of it. Um, so finally, what would be your advice, Asya, to all those men and women who are looking to break free from what they are into currently, maybe because that's stopping them. Mm. They, uh, there, is, there is that one extra spark which they lack, which, uh, which might help them achieve much more than what they are into today. Yeah. So what, what is your uh, words of wisdom for these men and women to be empowered so that they can achieve the greatest that they can? Yeah. What I've realized is your mind is your biggest cage, right? So... Um, I got this from the previous speaker as well, <laughs> so it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, most of the limitations that you have in your life come from your own self, own self. right? Um, I'll just give you my own example. I mean, of course, I had a great job. I had a great boss. But also, I used to feel like, you know, because I was a lot in my comfort zone, I used to feel like, am I going to be able to step out of this organization or this role? Am I going to find another job? Because when you're too long in your comfort zone, you start doubting yourself, right? right? But then I, I took the plunge. I left that job for whatever reasons, got another job. I mean, fairly easily, touch wood, <laughs> I might add. Um, and that was the point that was actually a little bit of a turning point for me. And I was like, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. right. So that fear of the future is a little bit to a large extent. It has gone from my mind because I was four months without a job, but I survived and I landed a job equally great. Right. And I realized that it was just my own fear that was inhibiting me, 
right? No regrets about the past. I loved what I did. I love what I'm doing now. But if there is a need tomorrow to move on, I don't think I will now be caged by my own mind, right? right? So if right. I have to take the plunge, if, for example, I want to start something of my own or whatever, no plans of that, by the, by the way. But if I have to, I feel like I have now a much more open mind towards that thought. Before I would be like, no, 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 I have... Um, I have liabilities, I yeah. have obligations, I have to build a future for yeah. my kids. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of things. But now I'm like, okay, I'll see what tomorrow brings. I'm sure whatever it will bring will be good. And if, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? That's a very famous saying, right? right? So make the best of whatever you have, but don't get stuck. That would be my advice. If you're not happy with what you're doing, it's time to move on, clearly, Right. What that move on looks like for you, it's going to be different for everybody, right? For, for, for some people, it's like, you know, they, they are not very happy with the corporate life. They want to start something of their own and, you know, be their own boss. So if, it, if that's for you, do it. But also plan towards it, right? It's not like one day you're like, you know, I'm really fed up of this. And it could be, if it works for you, it could be. I'm not saying it's, it's right or wrong, but... What I would say is, for me personally, I'm a bit of a planning person. So if I was like, okay, the corporate world is not for me for, let's say, uh, f forever, I'll start planning towards it. So maybe start saving towards setting yeah. up something of my own, something yeah. like that, right? Because if you, I mean, of course, n no matter how much you plan, there'll always be challenges, right? You can't always cover 100% of everything, but at least if you have 70, 30, 80, 20 covered, at least, you know, you don't have to worry about the, um, let's say, the smaller parts of it, right? right? You know, for example, how is, if I move from a corporate to an in entrepreneurship, uh, how, is, uh, how is my home going to run for the next six months, right? So those are the things you would rather focus your time on what are the creative bits that I need to think, how should I market whatever product or service or whatever right. I'm doing to make right. it successful. Right. So I think it's, Really, for, for, for us, for me, it's thinking outside the box a little bit. And particularly for me, I've seen, you know, getting a little bit out of my comfort zone. So when you first approached me for the podcast, I've never done this before. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's like, you know, believing in yourself, yourself, right? That, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can get it, right? You can achieve it. Um, like I said earlier, all the successful people you see, they don't have any superpowers, right? It's just that they took the plunge and they believed in themselves, right? And sometimes it's, it's, it's also being a little bit rational that if you take the plunge, it isn't working out. It's then a bit of a trade-off between do you keep going or do you need to reevaluate what you need to do, right. right? And that has to be, in my opinion, a very smart decision. It has to, you know, kind of you have to see if it didn't work out, why it didn't work out? And is it something... So, for example, in the case of a product, it could be that the market is not ready for the product, right? So do you keep going? Do you keep marketing? Do you keep advertising and hope that people will accept it? Or do you maybe need to think about another product, right? So that has to be a very informed decision. Again, it's very, you know, uh, different circumstances for everybody. Um, but yeah, I mean, long story short, I would say people just, you know, you need to believe in yourself and you don't have to let your mind and the right. fears of your mind limit um, what you can do. So you have to be mentally strong. That's that's exactly. your advice. And uh, just before we close off, uh, I'm just inquisitive to know, Asya, because uh, knowing from uh, this entire conversation, you are a very rational person, a very uh, 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 a highly <laughs> professional person. That's my opinion about you. Um <laughs> What exactly was the reason? It could be personal as well. So, mm -hmm. of course, you can decide um, how you would want to answer this question. But w what was the reason for you to move from, a, from an organization, which is definitely uh, internationally known, mm -hmm. to take that plunge to have a four-month break? Because when you say four months, I presume you, you decided to switch without a job in yeah. hand. Yeah. So... Being the person I now understand you are, what made you get into this mode? Yeah. So, well, to be honest, um, it was a very hard decision because I was so comfortable. I mean, I loved working with my team, with my boss, and it was like, you know, uh, I could do that forever. But 
as you said, I mean, you, you are right. I'm to a, to a large extent a rational person, but on the contrary, I'm also a very emotional person, very emotional person. I call myself an empath. So I had 22 people in my team, and I felt personally responsible for each one of them. So, and, and I was kind of all the time stepping into their shoes. I was absorbing all of their energies. And, you know, COVID was a difficult time for everybody. You know, I mean, most of my team got COVID. I got COVID twice myself. So, you know, stepping in for people when they were not well, as you would, as, as a good leader would do, right? But also, I mean, I had such a great relationship with all of them that, you know, we, we would talk about personal stuff. They would tell me about their family. And, you know, I would feel, you know, like really responsible, you know, just like a mother is for, for her kids, right? At one point, it became too much because I was not able to detach myself and I felt like I was absorbing way too many emotions. And it started to affect me, uh, affect my mental health, physical health. And I was like, yeah, OK, this is a personality trait, right, to be an empath. It's not, I mean, I know a lot of people say you can train your mind to not do that. For me, it was not <laughs> possible. I think this is also a challenge for a lot of women. Yeah, exactly. Fact. We are emotionally, yes. we get we emotionally attached. more involved and right. more attached, right? So. It was it was either um, it was either that you know I keep um, going with that and my cup was getting emptier day by day, whereas I was trying to filling other fill other people's cup. cups and in the in the process it was affecting my mental and physical health, and I, I thought you know it's it's really time to to take a break you know kind of yeah relook at myself relook at my priorities because. I mean, no matter what you do, I think if you're not healthy, if you're not in the right state of mind, nothing else matters, right? So you have to be healthy to enjoy life, right? I mean, work, all of that, everything comes secondary. Your health, your family is and should always be your priority, right? right. And if there's something that is affecting that, I think it was really time for me to step back and think about um, um, what I was doing and where I wanted to be and would I want to continue with this? Um, so that was the reason I left. Um, and uh, luckily, I found a job where I don't have a team at the moment. I do deal with a lot of people. I'm a people person, by the way. I, I connect socially really well with people. Um, but it's not like I feel responsible for anybody at the moment right. because I don't have, have a, a team. team. So I love what <laughs> I'm doing. And with sans the <laughs> the emotional part of it, so that was actually the reason. And and I remember when I was uh, looking out for jobs, I had a few other jobs which were kind of like the same, even higher, one level higher. I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and people people still ask me. I mean, people who know me closely, and they're like, why did you go from a 22 member yeah. team to an individual contributor yeah. role? And I was like, for me, it's. It's not the okay. As a career-oriented woman, I am ambitious. I have certain ambitions, certain goals, but as long as they don't interfere with my health and with my personal life, right? If it does, I will prioritize my health and my family over everything. But the current role really helps me balance both, which which you know I'm really grateful for, and that's why. And people are like, no, but you had a great designation there or whatever. And I'm like, I'm not really a designation person. person right i'm i'm pretty happy with what i've achieved in life uh, i'm happy doing what i'm doing as as a job so that is all really that matters for me um so not everybody sees it the same way, and that's totally okay because everybody is different and everybody has right. different priorities so if somebody wants to be um you know managing 100 people good for them but that's just not me <laughs> so Right. So the greatest takeaway from this conversation, prioritize your health and, and especially being a woman, it's really yeah. important because if you are not healthy, you cannot really take care of what's coming up. Absolutely. Whether it be in terms of family or whether it be in terms of uh, work. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Asya. I enjoyed this uh, talk with you today. 
uh, and I hope you'll keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, thank you so much, Malvika. Like I said, it's you know <laughs> a new thing for me, but I really enjoyed it, and I think you probably hooked me onto something. So <laughs> let's I'm happy. I'm happy. I started off. Yeah, women empowering women, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so Asya. much.